right, what's going on, everybody? It's your girl Pam with 2200 Taps. Yo, if you have not caught up to any of our episodes, you guys are missing out on some incredible content. And our guests, like I say, they just keep getting better and better. And I, I really say that every single time, and I mean it every single time. So, without wasting any more of your time, I want to let you guys know that, um, real quick, these episodes are explicit, guys. If you have little ears around, you need to just, you know, monitor monitor that, police that as parents or people that are streaming this. Uh, full disclosure, I'm not a therapist. I'm a life coach. I don't try to be a therapist. I'm not trying to be a life coach. We just ask simple questions, some hard questions, and then our guests take us where we want, you know, wherever they want us to, t- uh, to go. So there's that. Um, caught a lot of shit for some episodes recently for, uh, you know, cause they were offending people, which I think is a good thing. Cause we're, ruff- we're ruffling feathers around topics that need to be mm-hmm. talked about. So with that, I, uh, I'm not sorry for that. However, I will put disclaimers out because I'm tired of getting my ass chewed or phone calls like, Hey, I'm so sensitive. <laughs> so, <laughs> so with that, um, just turn it off if you don't like that stuff. So ain't gonna bother us. But with that, I just do want to tell you guys, I am super stoked for today. I had this amazing lady just reach out to me on, uh, of all places, LinkedIn. I got this cool message. And um, she is a, uh, she's an Air Force veteran. We're about to introduce her. And did you do 20 plus years? Did I read that right on your LinkedIn? I did 21. That is incredible. That is absolutely incredible. That's like a goal that not many people really hit. (laughs) whether injury or whatever. Uh, but her name is, um, uh, it's Aaliyah Air Force, uh, Air Force, excuse me, Air Force veteran. Uh, she's also known as the boss whisperer. Mm-hmm. And we're going to really talk about that here in a minute. But before we get started with her story, how you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. I feel like a rookie. I'm like, man, did I hit every topic that I needed to hit before we introduced her? Yes. <laughs> oh, and if so. you if you like these things, leave us a review, guys. Good, bad, or indifferent. I don't care if you're offended. Leave us a review. You're going to help us with the algorithms to push these episodes out uh, to more people. Seriously. So if you're pissed off, I would love to hear it because that just means we're going to get pushed out to more people that need to hear this shit. So mm-hmm. without further ado, yeah, I am. I'm so stoked that you're on today. And and, you know, you and I had back and forth banter on LinkedIn that we'll talk about here soon. But uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into your story and, yeah, how you connected with me for us to get to this point right here? Yeah. So, like you said, I just retired after 21 years from the Air Force. And I did a ton of different jobs while I was in. And I got a ton of education while I was in. And I had a lot of trauma while I was in. Yeah. And uh, I stumbled across one of your episodes. Uh, It was actually the the spouse of Tom Cruise and Mm -hmm. his story. And it was heartbreaking and and at the same time, I felt like I could connect with her and I knew what I was feeling was very similar to the things that she was feeling. So I went back and listened to Tom's episode and I said, oh, man, I got to reach out to Pam. She needs to know. I've seen some things very similar like this. So, yeah, totally. And we we love Tom and Heather and, and their their kiddo Holden. That was the first time I interviewed a 10 year old or any kid for that yeah. matter. And he did great. He did amazing. Yeah. So, you know, we. We honored uh, their wishes to ask him certain questions, and we love just his honesty. And guys, if you haven't heard it, you need to get on there and listen to these episodes, uh, Heather and Tom Cruise, and all of them for that matter. Uh, but yeah, you know, when you you messaged me about that, and it was like, hey, I heard these episodes and this and that, I'm like, wait, what's going on with you? Like, what, what happened with you? And we were connecting not, re- not long ago. Uh, mm mm-hmm just kind of talking about stuff and you're already pouring yourself out there. Yeah. And I had to stop you for this moment <laughs> because I'm like, wait, 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 this is like amazing content. Let's, let's time out. Right. Yeah. So I, um, thank you for being here. Seriously. Yeah. Well, with that, um, I do want to jump into your story. You did 20 plus years in the mm-hmm. air force and you said you've been through a lot. You had a lot of education, but the trauma more specifically, you you were really kind of diving into that. So without further ado, I'd love for you to share your story and we'll just ask questions along the way if that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'll start at the beginning and you just throw those questions in whenever you're oh, ready. I will. <laughs> 
So I joined the Air Force in 2001. Both of my parents were Army. And uh, the, the day after I graduated high school, my mom kicks down my bedroom door and says, get out. <laughs> and I said, okay, uh, but I don't know where to go. Yeah. I guess I'll go to the military. What else am I going to do, right? So I go to the recruiter's office, and I'm going to the Army because – both of my parents that's where they came from so yeah. that's just naturally where I was going and the Air Force recruiter stepped out in the hallway and stopped me before I ever got to the end of the hall and hmm. I never I never made it wow. <laughs> I never made it to the end of the hall so that's how I got Air Force. <laughs> they're like do you like five-star <laughs> dining and really nice hotels because yeah, that's what we yeah. can offer you <laughs> right you like oh steak god. and lobster Wednesdays no shit. yes <laughs> oh my god yeah, it's. I'm not kidding. Steak and lobster Wednesdays was. That's what you got. That's what you got. Yeah, Man, both of them. We were lucky. Yeah. We got fish Fridays, not steak and lobster <laughs> Wednesday. I'm telling you, you guys had way more money than us. Oh, I know. Or than I know. everybody for most. Well, parts. we have the same amount of money. They just allocate it differently. Yeah, apparently to food <laughs> and amazing resources. Yeah. Oh. So yeah. And, and I really don't have a lot to talk about for the first half of my career. Mm. Not, not a lot happened. I was young. I was bratty. I, <laughs> I had an attitude just like every other 18, 19 year yeah. old that. So, you know, I, I joined when I joined, I actually joined as a bomb builder. So the first five years I spent on the flight line uh, building bombs. And my first base was Tyndall Air Force Base. And when I got to Tyndall, uh, maybe a a couple weeks after I got to Tyndall, 9-11 happened. Mm. So I never built a single bomb since I was there. The entire time I was there, I was on patrol. So yeah. I knew nothing about my actual job while I was there. <sighs> Jeez. So that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then my next assignment was Guam. Mm. And I got hurt a lot there. Phys yeah. Just the physicality of the job of building bombs alone by itself is pretty challenging but to do that in a place like guam <laughs> yeah so let me ask you this real quick because i i'm yeah. curious i'm curious i was not a bomb builder i didn't i wasn't around that shit i did search and rescue i did other stuff right yeah, yeah so a buddy of mine was around bombs and he had to do all that stuff he's a marine corps veteran and he told me and maybe you can help me understand this like when you're around bombs you can't have cell phones around because mm -mm. the cell phone could potentially mm -mm. trigger it mm -hmm. correct Dude, that yeah. is bananas. I just, just yep. the, the sensitivity of that trigger to, to go off, meaning activate yeah. it, not like blow it up, guys, but to act, right. not activate <laughs> it to like start. Here we go, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And let phone. me tell you. So in Guam, Guam has a massive bomb dump. It's just a bunch of buildings that have a bunch of bombs hmm. stored inside them, right? Well, Guam's been around since the when we were flying b-52s you know yeah, back in the day in fact we actually still have the remains of a b-52 on the side of the island because it crashed hit the island and it was just too dangerous to go recover the parts so yeah. if you fly by you'll see parts of that b-52 still hanging off the side of the island wow and one one uh building in particular in our bomb dump the pallets that all of the bombs were strapped to mm -hmm. started to uh, erode. <laughs> and so the, the bombs were literally like piled on top of each other because the wood was just gone. Oh, and it was so dangerous that we opened the door and said, nope, and shut it back up. <laughs> My God. Yeah. Nope. We're just going to, we're just. We'll, we'll, we'll tackle that another day. <laughs> well, the, close, the closest thing that I've been to, if you will, was stationed in Otis Air, Nar Air National Guard Base in Cape Cod. Mm -hmm. Went to the air station. Then I was at the Com State and Com State Boston's. It, was, it used to be there. They've sh since shut it down. But they used to use that base for an old dumping ground as well back in the day, back yeah, World War II. Yeah. Fuel, bombs, mortars, uh, ordinances, all that shit, right? And when they were digging a fresh water, a building to filter fresh water to the station, to our station, they, mm -hmm. they had to stop because they came across about 30 or 40 unexploded ordinances on one side of the road. That was one Ooh. side of the road. Ooh. So the team comes in, we get to like hit the freaking toggle. So it was the coolest shit ever. So we got to see it explode. And then they went to go dig on the other side, found about 30 or 40 more and had to do the same shit, right? Here's the funny part. 
my job at that unit was to cut grass. And oh, we're, wow. we're cutting grass with riding mowers, John Deere tractors, all this stuff. Make sure the diesel engine's running. And I'm like, dude, we're cutting grass over all this shit. Yeah. And we didn't even get hazard pay. <laughs> I'm like, at any moment, we could just be like gone, you know? Yeah. And uh, I had some guys bring in this plate with wires coming out one time. They're like, hey, MK2, look at this shit. I'm like, you better go take that back. Oh, oh my gosh. What the hell that is, but that needs to go way <laughs> far away from us. So... Yeah, Otis was an, <laughs> Otis was interesting, and I want to bomb tech. Like that was in the Coast Guard. I have to deal with that shit. That's not to say we don't have people that deal with it. I didn't have to deal with it. Sure. So when he told me that, I was like, "Are you kidding me, dude? From a cell phone? <laughs> yeah. Whoa, you know." But yeah. just anyway, anyhow, before we get way far off topic, so <clears throat> that's pretty badass. You did all that stuff. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. And that was just my second base. <laughs> that was your second base. Well, hey, let's fast forward to uh, let's fast forward to your story. Okay. Um, so, how many deployments did you have under under your belt, or do you have? I had two. You had two. I had two. And yep. you started sharing with me that you went through some uh, pretty severe military sexual trauma. Mm-hmm. Could you mm-hmm. share with us what happened? Well, I mean, I don't even know if that is your story or there's more leading up to mm-hmm. it or, or whatnot, but the floor is yours, my friend. Oh, yeah. There is much, much more to the story. Yeah. But, to, but to start it off, uh, I only went on two deployments in 21 years, and both times I was sexually assaulted by someone I worked with. Both times. The first time happened when I was stationed at Ellsworth and we got orders to IUD. So... Uh, we were supposed to go as a team. Air Force usually goes individually, but this particular deployment, we were going as a team. And so the team went to a training beforehand. So we went to this training and the guy that I sit next to every single day in the office goes to this training with me and all of a sudden has the need to put his hands all over me. During during your training or where, where did this happen at? Um, whenever the rest of the team wasn't around. Okay. And it was very, it was very aggressive. It wasn't like a, oh, I didn't mean to do it. No, it was very like, I'm grabbing you and you're going to take it. Okay. And so it got to a point where I shoved him away and I called my, my uh, supervisor immediately and said, this is what's going on. He did this. I said this. I told him to leave me alone. He didn't. He keeps grabbing me. I'm going to go hide in my hotel room. That's what I'm going to do. Mm. I'm going to go hide in my hotel room. So when we have to go to training tomorrow, I'm going to need someone else <laughs> to walk with me because I don't trust him to not be outside my room mm. after this. Uh, we've completed training. Everyone that was there that knew about it, um, it wasn't, they didn't take the measures to protect me. They, they, all they did was gossip about it. So, and I'm going to stop you right there because that's, yeah. it. Uh, back in the day, I mean, I, I enlisted in 03 and that was mm-hmm. this whole sensitivity and sexual harassment training. It wasn't a thing. It wasn't a yeah. thing back in the no. day. No, no. So, and that was common. Pete, you yep. looked, it was you that was the issue instead of him or her. Yes, you yes, know? yes. It was a big deal, which is why we have stuff implemented now. Yep. So when he put his hands on you, what was the, and, and I, I say this carefully because I don't want to overstep boundaries, right? Sure. How far did it go? Was it just putting hands on you? Was it like, or was there a specific incident where it got, it was like, no, that we're done here. So this was a, um, the less violent incident. So this one, okay. the, the furthest he ever got was he shoved his hand down my shirt and grabbed my bare breast and shook it. Yeah. <laughs> and wow. I, sh- I grabbed his shoulders and I shoved him away and I said, can I cuss or should I not? <laughs> up to you. You're the one. Uh, okay. It's totally up to so, you. I shoved him away and I said, don't you ever fucking touch me again. Yeah. And I called my supervisor, let her know. Well, after that training, we went back to our, our home station before we de- did the deployment. Yeah. And I went to see the first sergeant and I, and, uh, I, first of all, he, no one ever told the Sark or the Sharp. No one ever called them. No one ever reported it. And when I talked to the first sergeant, he said, well, I spoke to him and he told me he found Jesus. So I'm not going to come down on him too hard. You spoke to the, he spoke to the guy that you were talking about. Yes. 
and he found Jesus, and you're not going to come down on him too hard. Yep. Hmm. Wow. By my first sergeant said that. Yep. So that was in, 2011. And in that moment, how did you feel when he told you that? I, I was crushed. Yeah. I was crushed. I, you know, up until that point, I hadn't been exposed to any bad apples in the military. This was 10 years into my career. And this was the first time that I had ever been exposed to someone in my leadership I should have been able to trust and realized the hard way that I couldn't. That pisses me off so bad. Yeah. <laughs> it really does. Because yeah. as a female that served as well, like it just pisses me off for yeah. a lot of reasons. So yeah. it's 10 years after you enlisted. So was this mid 2000, early? This was 2011. Yep. 2011. Yeah. Cause 2010, that's when Obama had really re- had uh, removed the don't ask, don't tell 2010 ish. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it was already mm-hmm. becoming kind of a shit storm. Yeah. And all the yeah. sensitivity and all this bullshit. So I get it. Okay. Okay. Yep. Damn. All right. So that happens. Did you still have to interact with that asshole? I did. I had to work next to him every single day after the, that. The guy that groped you. Yeah. Yeah. How how did you do that without losing your ever loving mind? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. And at the time, they didn't even they they weren't adamant about teaching people that that is sexual assault. Right. They weren't. So it was kind of like. Well, if you if they didn't even tell the Sark this happened, then is it really reportable? I don't I don't even know. I didn't uh, know what my rights were, and that's really sad. Well, yeah, they don't teach. They didn't teach us that. No. I, they really didn't teach us that. And then by then, I was a supervisor. Like I can't. Yeah. Damn, dude. It was bad. Like it was we, bad. We had a we had an incident. With, one incident. We had many incidents. But when I was in uh, Petaluma, California, for some C schools. I had heard stories about a phantom groper. Mm. Yeah. I had heard stories, people, you know, living um, living in the barracks or coming in for sea school or whatever, what have you. You'd be taking a nap on the rec deck. Somebody would come in, grope you and run. And they yes. never they never caught him because he, they were yeah. the phantom groper. And that's the thing, right? And, and not to get too far off topic because I want to stay here, yeah. right? Yeah. What... The civilian, what the news is going to, they don't fucking tell people this shit, right? Like, you're not going to, you're going to hear about all this other stuff about the military. But when you, when you're on the inside, it's like, dude, if people only knew half the shit that happens here, you you know what I'm saying? If you only knew. If you only freaking knew. Uh, Anyhow, let's get back to you. So. Yeah. How how much longer did you have to work next to that guy? I had to work next to him for four years. Four years. So nothing came out of it? Nothing. Was not he, a thing. Was he, not w- a thing. Without, I don't want to say names, of course, or any of that shit, but was he married or anything at the time, yes. kids? Oh, yes. Let's make this a yes. little worse. Yeah. Was he Geo Bachelor or was his wife there, like, on base? No, she was with him. Okay. Yep. Yeah. This. Yeah. I'm trying really hard not to, like, put myself in your shoes because I, uh, but it's so hard not to. It's so fucking hard not to. Um, so I'm going to try not to be too um, aggressive when I get like to certain questions because it literally just pisses me off to no end. Um, oh, you're going to, you'll be enraged when we get to part two then. Well, <laughs> I'm going to, I I have that healthy boundary where I can separate it. Uh, yeah. This is just hitting way too close to, to my, my shit. And I wasn't, I didn't have military se- sexual trauma by any means. Thankfully, I, I did not go through that. I know people, yeah. I know people that did. Yeah. And a lot of people that did. Uh, I even know men who got forced retired out or kicked out because they were, you know, accused of X, Y, and Z and they didn't do shit. I know that. So it was just a, it's a, it's a sad situation all around when you look at it. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm I'm, I'm back. We're good. (laughs) Um, We're good. Moving on. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. So that happened. So when you left Guam, where, where were you off to next? I left Guam. I went back to Eglin. Well, okay. actually, that was at Ellsworth. So we are there. Fast forward to 2011. So that was at Ellsworth. Ellsworth, Maine. Uh, South Dakota. 
Ellsworth Air Force. Yeah. Not it's good. out by uh, Rapid City. Okay. 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 Yep. Okay. So fast forward to your. So then a- yeah, after, after Ellsworth, um, then I went back to Eglin for a couple years and so after that i went to keesler air force base where i was an instructor for four years and that is one of my favorite assignments because i learned while i was there that i absolutely love teaching and if i can get back into higher ed at, out here I, that's absolutely what i want to do mm-hmm. however that is the time that I had the second deployment. So I was at Keesler 2015. I get orders to Honduras. Mm. So I go to Honduras and uh, I, I love the assignment at first. I'm the only Air Force in an entire platoon of Army. And so, you know, of course, they all have the Air Force jokes. Ha ha. Yeah, really funny. Yeah, I'll, I'll laugh with you because I am treated better. I'm not going to lie. They do put more money in my in my defect than yours. It's, it's true. It's true. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to You hear get it. more days off than me. I don't want to hear it. I get so much shit for being a coasty every time. Yeah, that's right. But I do. Well, I don't <laughs> know about you guys, but I do know that uh, at least for Army, the Army definitely gets more days off than us. So. I, I don't know. It, it could be a trade. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, it's not relevant. <laughs> it's really not relevant. I, I, at first, I loved it. I loved the uh, camaraderie. I kind of felt like I went back home because, remember, both my parents were Army, so it felt yeah. very familiar to me and very much like a homecoming. Anyway, one one night, I am asleep in my room, and I get a phone call from uh, one of the army members in my platoon and says, Hey, this person is down here telling everyone that you and him are doing it. And I was like, really? That's interesting. And at first I said, I don't care. Let him talk. People are going to talk. That's just what they do. Mm. But then I thought, no, wait a minute, because if anyone believes what he says, I could get in trouble because I was married and I didn't want anyone to make assumptions. So it's one o'clock in the morning, something like that. I get up and I walk down to where these these guys are at. They're all drinking beers, playing darts, being s- stupid. And uh, I saw him and I said, are you telling people that we're together, that we're having a thing here together? And he said, well, yeah, I mean, what's the big deal? Hmm. What's the big deal if it's really happening or not? Just let me, you know, get a little cred here with the guys. And I I, I, I lit him up. I, I, I went off on him so hard in front of all his friends that he he was literally in tears by the time I walked away. Hmm. I was livid. I said, don't you ever let my name come out of your mouth ever again. And I made sure to do that in front of everyone, everyone else, because I wanted them to know this is not real. Do not listen to him. (laughs) Yeah. So I went back to my room. And I went and I started to try to go back to sleep. The thing about Honduran uh, quarters is that they're not really well maintained. The door to my room did not work. Hmm. It didn't lock. It barely latched. And everyone knew that. Um, Maintenance knew it. Leadership knew it. Everyone that lives in in those housing knew it. So he came over to my room after I embarrassed him and he came in he helped himself into my room and uh he shoved me on the bed stomach down and violently raped me I waited until he was finished I didn't fight I was too scared the dude was huge he was massive so I just I kind of checked out to be honest with you I don't I remember everything up until that point and everything after, but the actual incident, I don't, I checked out. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I immediately, when it was over, I walked straight to the clinic and the provider said, do you want to tell me what happened? And I said, nope. He said, all right. And he stitched me back up and gave me some antibiotics and sent me on my way. Stitch you, stitched you back up? Where? I was torn. It tore me because it was violent. Um, Well, 
Yeah. So I didn't tell about anybody. that. I'm sorry about I that. Didn't, because of what happened in 2011, I wasn't I wasn't going to put myself through it anymore. I wasn't going to tell my supervisor and run to the sharp. It didn't work the first time. Why in the world would I try the second time? Do you feel like both incidents are they're they're both traumatic, whether you're quote unquote just barely fondled or groped or whatever yeah. to being severely sexually traumatized, right? Right. Right. Do you remember at any point, whatever incident, how when you officially just like numbed out? And numbed out? Numbed out or checked out or you're like, this is I guess I guess what I'm asking is what did that do to you after that yeah. incident as a emotionally, as a person, as as a as a military member and I can only imagine how unsafe you felt. And that's yeah, and 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 <laughs> that's actually a very good point. A lot of people that help people through sexual trauma will tell you it's not the physical pain that that scars us. It's the fact that we trusted someone and they betrayed that trust in such a way that you will never recover from that. Yeah. You can't. And so I I was very good at faking the funk for a while, for a while, probably about a year, year and a half. I was really good at faking it. Yeah. Um, but I was still very reactive, very emotional, very scared to death, mm -hmm. scared to death of everything. I didn't want to go into meetings with anyone with the door shut. I didn't want to. I didn't. I couldn't do anything with someone just me and them for a long time so i came back again i never told anyone in fact i had a friend that worked in legal and i tried to tell her but as soon as i started getting little hints out she said nope 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 don't tell me a thing i can't know and i was like well if if i can't tell you then i guess i just won't tell anybody because they got to do something yeah isn't that their yeah. job and that's kind of why I was telling her is maybe she could tell me how to how to take care of it, but she didn't want to. So I, I, whatever. So I get back to the states, and by the time I'm back to the states, of course my behavior is very erratic. I'm not myself. What do you mean I'm, erratic? What were you doing? Um, things things that really weren't attacks felt like attacks, and so I was reacting. Um, I was very emotional. Um, something as simple as, you know, um, why were you 10 minutes late? Well, that felt like an attack to me. And I've already learned through two different incidents that I can't trust leadership. So yeah, I just I start reacting. So what, having oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 just having like panic attacks and like full on meltdowns in at work. Yeah. Like, in front of everyone, just losing my shit damn near daily. So let me ask this. Because I, th th I think I heard you right. You said you were married at the time when this happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What the hell did that do to your relationship with your husband? Uh, we're divorced. We're divorced. Okay. Because I didn't want him to touch me anymore and he didn't know why. And I wasn't going to tell him. So fast forward to today, does he even know at this point? I I did ended up I did end up telling him the okay. day that we signed the papers. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um by then it was too late, but it was kind of my last ditch effort to just say this is why I it doesn't matter now, but yeah. this is why. Okay. I was just curious because you mentioned that and I feel like we just kind of grazed right yeah. past it, you know, and it's like, wait a minute, this hap physically happened to you and you're married mm -hmm. and there's a lot there, right? Yeah. So yeah, you, you couldn't trust leadership. You couldn't trust anybody. Mm -mm. At, what else happened leading up to you choosing to do what you're doing now? which I think is very commendable. I'm super stoked to share that here in a minute. Guys, if you're still with yeah. us, stick with us. I promise the good stuff's coming. It's but coming. We, we got to go through the mud, you know, yep. to get to the other side and we're going to do it. Yeah. Okay? So 
If that happened, yeah. you're getting, you're lashing out, you're showing up sideways because this shit happened to you. Mm-hmm. What then? Yeah. So I'm at, I'm being very irrational, erratic, all kinds of stuff. I'm being disciplined, counseled at least mm. weekly for my behavior. My commander at no point set, thinks to himself, maybe I should ask her why this top performing, hard charging, you know, number one troop is all of a sudden a piece of shit. No one asked those questions. Not one person bothered to look at my performance appraisals and think, she was the number one for 10 years straight, and now all of a sudden she's acting like this? Not one person did that. That's sad. So I, rather than healing and finding some kind of recovery, I dived deep, deep, deep into depression paranoia scared to death i stopped going to work and no one even noticed no one even noticed that e6 Aaliyah was not coming to work anymore except one person so day three i'm not at work there's one person that i've known for a couple years at this point and he has been there he's he's he recognized the signs because he himself has felt these things before and he said nope something something's wrong something I, I gotta go find her and he came to my house and kicked down my front door on day three and found me nearly catatonic in my bedroom I was so depressed I just wanted I just wanted to not wake up I, I would yeah. have done anything I would have done anything to not wake up and he came in, found me in my bedroom, threw me over his shoulder and took me to the ER. And he left me there and he said, I, I trust you to get yourself out of this. I trust you. I'm not going to tell the leadership about this. I need you. Promise me you're going to get yourself out of this. And I promised him and I didn't believe it, but I promised him. Um, but I did. I did eventually find a way to get myself out of that hole but it didn't end there. <laughs> yeah. But it di it didn't end there. Yeah. So that happened in 2015. 2020, I start experiencing some very, very painful menstrual cycles. Extreme, like debilitating. Every single time I have a cycle, I, I'm in bed for days. I cannot get up. And, that, and that's very unusual for me. My mm -hmm. cycles have o had always been fairly manageable. And so I go to several, several specialists, and they all agreed to the same conclusion that I had ovarian cysts, I had uterine cysts, and I had severe endometriosis as a result of the physical trauma that was done to my body five years previously. And so the only option was that I had to have a hysterectomy or I would continue to experience this excruciating pain for the rest of my life. And at that point, I'd never even had kids. Mm. So I had to have a hysterectomy before I was ever even able to have my own babies because of what happened to me in 2015. Wow. And it gets worse. <laughs> If you if you can believe it, it gets worse. Okay. I had the hysterectomy in September. Ten weeks later, I start feeling extremely feverish. My abdomen hurts. Something's not right. So I go to the on-base clinic. Now, this is 2020, so middle of COVID, right? I go to the clinic on base. And they won't let me in the front door because I'm feverish. And they said, you've probably got COVID. Just go to the back, do your test, and then quarantine for three days. And I said, I don't think this is COVID. I, I think this is something else. And they said, nope, just go do your COVID test and, and quarantine. So I did. I did my, my COVID test, went home, quarantined. But the next day I woke up, I couldn't poop. I couldn't pee. I couldn't do anything. My body was shutting down. And so I said, all right, I got to go to the ER. So I went to the ER and they said, oh, my God, thank you. Thank you for coming. You are literally within hours of dying. And I was like, what do you mean? And they said, 
you're septic. You're in septic shock. The hysterectomy that you had back in September became septic and you are within hours of dying. And so they pumped me with so many antibiotics that my kidneys damn near failed. <laughs> How do you become septic from that? Help me understand that from a hysterectomy. So the, yeah. So the bacteria, if it, if the bacteria gets into the localized um, sutures, then it's just an infection. But if it gets into your bloodstream, then it becomes septic because now it's going throughout your entire body. What, and it's no longer localized. What bacteria though? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> just in general, I'm like not a doctor. Kind of yeah. A bacteria. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. What a shit so, show. I'm gonna name well, this title of the show called a shit show. <laughs> Ali's Aaliyah's shit show. I really am because this is insane, yeah. and I say that and with all, all due respect. Of that. No, girl, I'm with you, <laughs> and all of that stems from 2015. What? All of that. I yeah. seriously want to find this douchebag and <laughs> I I won't yeah. say I'm going to hold back on that one, but still. All right. So yeah. we're, we're there. You're dealing with that. You, you're in the hospital. You're getting pumped with all these antibiotics. You're sick. You're almost dying. Mm -hmm. You're literally dying. Yeah. So yeah. what did recovery look like for that? What did that recovery look like for you? Um, I'm still recovering. Okay. I'm still recovering. So one of the lasting effects is I do have gastroparesis, mean, meaning that my stomach is paralyzed. So I cannot eat full meals for the rest of my life, basically. I'm, I eat, you know, two, three bites at a time all day. That's the only way I can eat. Please tell me the military is taking care of you after all this shit. I'm 100% disabled. <laughs> yeah, they don't really have a choice at this point. I can't eat my my entire abdomen can't have shot. kids no i get that i spent many years many years being angry just mm -hmm. angry like mm -hmm. i couldn't care, have cared less whose feelings i hurt i just wanted someone to know this is it's bullshit i'm just mad yeah, yeah. no keep... one you were supposed to protect me and you didn't your your command yeah yeah. Yeah. And the worst part, this is what actually made me click the button to retire. When I was in the hospital with sepsis, I was literally dying. My supervisor never told our commander. He didn't think our commander needed to know that I was within hours of dying. You know what's shitty about all that? I'm going to intervene real quick. Yeah, do it. So from my experience, people don't want people to know because it's going to look bad on them. Ultimately, that's what it boils down to. Yep. Or maybe they're up for promotion. Or maybe this. Oh, well, you don't have your shit together with your people. Why should you get promoted? You know what I'm saying? So let's yep. sweep it under the rug. Yep. I've seen that way too many fucking times, dude. It's so true. So true. Um, yeah. Hey, well, real quick. So that happened. Yeah. You retire. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, no. Don't you start with me. Is that me or you? Oh, it's me. Sorry, there's a little buzzing noise on my end. Um, gotcha. So you retire, and you shared something with me the other day that I don't want to overlook, because I think we need to honor him. The guy that found you. Yeah. Yeah. He, um... So like I said, he recognized the signs because he'd been there. Mm. He knew what it looked like. He knew where that place is. Mm. And uh, 2021, he succumbed to his own depression and took his own life. So he saved me and couldn't save himself. Yeah, that's all too common. I don't want to go over that because I think it's important to know that somebody who gave a shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah. I just want to honor him. I don't even know his name. You don't have to say it if you don't want to. Oh, we don't have to do that. But I think we can just for pause for that second because, I mean, you would, yeah. I don't think you would. Aside from everything else, like, who knows what, what could have happened to you had he not, you know, yeah. kicked no, down the door, No, I wouldn't right? be here. I would not be here if it weren't for him. I was certain of that. So let me ask you this because of that. Because I think we can all learn something value of this. 
What did that, when he died, what was that like for you? Because I know we were talking through some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. What did that do to you? And how is that playing out today and what you're, you're doing, which we're about to get to here in a minute? I think you put it best when we spoke about this first first time. You said, well, that is a mind fuck. <laughs> it really is. It really is. It really is. Yeah. It destroyed me when I found out. Um, but at the same time, I took that as a sign. I said, because of that, I can't let, I can't let what effort he put in to save me go to waste. I have to live the absolute best life that allows me to serve others in his honor. Cause I cannot let, let that go to waste. I just, I just wish I could have done the same for him. Yeah. And we, and, and I shared that with you, what happened to me. You yeah. Know, and, and so many other, it's not just me, but so many others. We had a, a guy, one of our mentors, his name is Martin Boyd. He helped hundreds, if not thousands of us, just helped us get better. And for many yeah. of us, he helped us take suicide off the table. Yeah. Me personally. And it was because of his story, because he had attempted years ago and he survived. And now he's like, no, you guys are worth more than that. And I know because I was there. Yeah. Only to lose him to suicide right before the month before COVID kicked off, he killed himself. Yeah. And I remember I was like, dude, this is such a mind fuck. I was like, if he can't make it, am I? That's what I yeah. asked. That's what I asked myself for so long. If he didn't even, he couldn't even make it. Do I even have a chance? You know? Yeah. And we do have a, a tribute uh, episode for him way back in season one. It's like episode eight or something. So if you guys yeah. want to. And we, I interviewed, oh man, not even a week after he died. I interviewed a lot of people who he helped impact. It's pretty intense, but it's it's it was the only way I knew how to grieve, and people wanted to talk about him and love on him, and 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 it's there, so it's really cool. Yeah, but but yeah, when you mentioned that, I'm like, dude, I so get that, I so get it. He didn't kick down the door for me, but metaphorically, he sure as shit did kick down that door for me. Yeah, he did. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Now with that, I think we can segue unless there's anything else that you want to put out there on the table because <laughs> oh, there's God, a lot no. of shit, right? <laughs> We are done with the trauma. We hadn't even talked about your childhood, but we're just gonna we're just gonna leave that be for now. But uh, hey, so we we let's polish this up, yeah, because we can polish a turd and still make it look good. But it's always gonna be a Absolutely. turd. Our turds yeah. are never turds though. After we're polished up, they're pretty. Nah. They're pretty pristine. <laughs> so, of all of that, what was it? What's what what gave you the idea to start your business yeah. and to do what you're doing? And guys, take a deep breath, do some box breathing, recenter, because here's the good stuff. It's all good stuff. Yeah. But here's the really good stuff, right? So yeah. Good stuff. What uh what led you to doing what you're doing right now? Bes well, it was besides interesting that. <laughs> <laughs> so as I was coming up through the military, I, I I ended up getting a ton of education. Um and it was legitimately I had no plan of, of doing what I do now. It was just because I wanted to be a better manager. Yeah. You know, so I got a degree in technology management because I wanted to be, be more innovative and I wanted to show people how to be innovative. I got a degree in HR because I wanted to be a better leader and I wanted to know how to create, you know, HR friendly environments. And then I got a third degree in, in healthcare management just because why not? I, I, I could take this to healthcare too. You mm -hmm. know, I could do all these things. Wow. And so, yeah, so I, I, I uh, retired with my three masters and then I started my doctorate. And as I'm going through my doctorate program, I'm realizing that everything I want to study is because of what happened to me in the military. Mm -hmm. Everything I want to study for my doctorate is based on poor managers, poor work culture, just people that just don't know how to ask the question. What, why is this person different now? Why is this person not engaged? Why is this person want to quit? Mm -hmm. Why is this person not coming to work anymore? You know, I, those are the things I started focusing on in my doctorate. And I said, you know what? I'm onto something here. Mm -hmm. 
So I did a little research and I found out that 85% of work centers are toxic. So that was a big red door for me. I said, let's go. <laughs> That's just a civilian workplace, right? Yeah. 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 That's scary. Yeah. That's super scary. That doesn't even include the military work centers because we can't really audit them the same way. No, but I'd say it's pretty damn close. If not yeah. I, <laughs> I would. Yeah. The institution wise, I, I, I still support it, but there are a lot of bad apples. Yeah. All it takes is one, though. So you are, you know, it's funny, you're, you're listing off all the little, your degrees in every single area. And I'm like, dude, every single area she's listing off is everything we just talked about. Every, everything. <laughs> yeah. So when you, yeah. And there's fine. And, then, and yeah. right there is finding purpose in your story. And we were talking about that with Tom, excuse me, Heather and, and yeah. Holden's too little. He kind of went off to play with his, his games, but with, with, with those two, <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. But with those two, it was, um, about finding purpose in your story. I feel like you're, you're, you're doing it. Yeah. Um, Everything I do now is for a reason. It all stems from what happened. So when you present your business to people, what does that look like? Because you got an elevator pitch. I know you do. I do. What is I your do. elevator pitch? Well, I tell them that I am the boss whisperer. I am a work culture consultant where I teach management teams how to create environments where people don't want to quit. There's your elevator pitch. <laughs> yeah, here's my one question I ask you. Yeah. Why should I hire you? I love that question. What's your turnover look like? How much money are you spending on people that quit before telling you why they quit? Also, but what makes you the the expert, the whisperer? Why I mean Oh, that's that's easy. And not only do I have the education, but I've lived it. This is my passion. Everything I do this, I don't need the money. I do it because I genuinely want to show you how to create safer, healthier work environments. I want to show you how to maximize your profits while also creating an environment where people trust you, where people will, will do the hard work without you even asking. Because if you teach your people if you if you take care of your people, the mission will take care of itself. Yeah. If the mission is not taking care of itself, that's a huge red flag that you are missing something. So last question, right? I don't know why this mm. turned into like an inner like a hiring. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. But what makes you the expert? What makes me the expert is the passion. Why do you? Have it passion? is truly the purpose and passion behind it. Which you is know? what? Creating safe healthy work environments where people can trust you. I'm trying to get it out of you. You won't give it to me. I don't me. know what you're saying. <laughs> what, do I, what do I got to say? <laughs> it's all, it's actually all amazing. It's actually spot on. I guess what I'm trying to get, I know what I'm trying to get out of you is like, you know, you're, I've been there. I oh would, yeah. Like, yeah. Like at what point do you share that with them? Like, Hey, like, I know you don't just give it away right out the gate. Cause I mean, it's kind of no. like, Hey man, this is my business. But if you really need to know, I've been there, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, phenomenal answers. I'd hire you right now, but I just don't have a whole lot of people that work for me. So I can't really no, do shit. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get to the point where I can hire one. <laughs> Yo, me too. I need to start with an assistant. So, yeah. God, I feel that. And I'm almost, I'm almost there. We'll see. <laughs> Hey, nice job, by the way. I really appreciate that you playing that little game with me because I was really like, can I get her to that say it? That was fun. Can I get her to that say it? That was fun. But it was honest. Everything was honest. Yeah. Oh, man. So we're doing really good on time. Okay. So what else, do you, what, what else do you focus on primarily with your business besides all that? that you just like, we just spat off to each other. I think we kind of nailed it. Um, yeah. Yeah. But is that all you do or what what organizations should I say you focus on if you focus on anything or is this across the board? Anybody with a freaking LLC, DBA yeah. you know, kind of thing? Like what's your primary focus? So I typically like to work with teams that are around 200 or less. Okay. And so that can be small businesses or that can be, you know, departments within a larger organization. But I think that once you get beyond that, then it starts becoming a lot more political yeah. And po politics can influence culture a lot more than anyone than anything else. Girl. So once you start getting that big, <laughs> I'm not I can't teach you. I can't teach you anything you don't want to hear. So 
Hmm. And you know, the the, the hardest part is, is sometimes I have to tell the manager that hired me, you're the problem. And that's an uncomfortable conversation to have. I mean, but here's the thing. It's like they should know what they're getting themselves into. Oh, maybe they don't. I don't. That's why they have the problem. I don't know. You know, I, I have learned theory. I have learned that most of them, you know, CEO level, C-suite level, they don't they don't think for a second that they're the problem. Never even occurred to them. Dude, I used to work for a husband wife duo. Talk about nepotism in the workplace. <laughs> it was bad. I got fired. And even then my HR was like, I don't know why they're firing you. I'm like, ah, pff, hell of a, yeah, it was bad. It was bad, bad. I've been wow. I've fired way too many times and I've been hired, which is really sad. So I don't even know why I'm putting that on here, but I have been. Uh, I just don't like bullshit, dude. I just, yeah. I, and I, and here's the thing. They don't teach you in taps. Y'all have taps right before you get out. Yep. Right. Yep. So it's like a four day class guys that they teach you how to write a resume, how to dress, how to do this. Sort what they of. don't be sort of what they don't tell us or teach us is like, hey, the way we talk to each other here does not work in, in the outside world. Yes, <laughs> I was yes. Like, Damn, I got fired for what? Yes, you know it's true. Damn. It's true. Uh, <laughs> I, I tell people all the time, you got to learn civilianese. You got to be bilingual. <laughs> you got to be bilingual, or as my husband likes to say it, he says you got to learn how to speak pogue. You can't go out here. Not knowing that language. <laughs> Damn. It's so like, man, it's so, wow. It's it's a shit show, man. It's funny. It's not funny when you get fired, but it's funny when, when pe people look at you like, man, you're, you're mean. You're evil. That's dark. Oh my God. You just said what? I'm like, what? Yeah. But, uh, it's so funny. Real quick. A friend of mine, she's so very like, she doesn't use like shit show or she doesn't use that jargon and i taught her some words so she actually like, yeah spat back off some stuff that was happening at her work happening at her work using those words that i taught her and she was like really yeah. thinking about it when she said it she, fu she fucking nailed it i was like i'm so it. proud of you uh, it's it a, it a proud moment <laughs> teaching people that i care about how to speak my language it was it was so <laughs> oh my god <laughs> well i gotta tell you man is there a mm. Did I miss anything as far as what you're doing now and all that good stuff? Or is there anything else we need to hit on so we don't miss it? I really want to show people what you're doing and, and, and all that good stuff. So No, I mean, I'm still out there helping veterans with their transition. So if anyone have, needs help with that, hit me up on LinkedIn. If you have work culture questions, hit me up with that. And my favorite mm -hmm. series that I have right now is called Inspirational Managers. And it's a quote from um, some of the most offensive managers you've ever had. So if you have an idea for things that your boss has said to you that you're like, did he really just say that to me? Send it my way. I are, like inspirational managers. <laughs> are you writing a you writing a book? Or are you just put putting stuff uh, no, together? It's, no, it's just a series of, oh, look what look at the quote I got today <laughs> kind of thing. And then I and I like to write down the quotes that I get from managers as I do my investigations too. They're hilarious. Like what? Do you have a few off the top of your head? Oh, yeah. Uh, one CEO said to a female employee, I know you're going to go see your boyfriend this weekend, so I don't want to see you struggling to walk on Monday. Okay. Are you serious? Yeah. A CEO said that to a female employee. I'd have been like, you'd think it, it, I'd be struggling to walk. You should see him. He, he made that my job very easy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Things like that. So if you've got an inspirational manager quote, send it my way. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, uh, <laughs> there's yeah. a fine line. There's a fine line. Holy crap. I had, I had one, one person tell me, I can't be racist. I'm from Panama. Oh, okay. <laughs> are you serious yeah his uh his employee was accusing him of racism and he said i can't be racist i'm from panama wow yeah <laughs> he made my job really easy too wow maybe i should take your course <laughs> all this shit's like hitting me i'm like i just want to like spit back because i think it's funny but i'm like dude maybe i'd be the problem <laughs> I'm just joking, guys, but I'm not. I'm. I might have to hire you. Just saying. That's hilarious. Oh yeah. my god, I feel like such conviction right now. I'm like, yes. oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I said that. Hey. 
there's a reason I do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might have to, yeah, I might have to hire you pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for being on today. I really, yes, girl. Really, I've had a good time. I've had a good time. But it's uh, been fun. real quick, where can people find you before I let you go? Hit me up on LinkedIn. I will always on there answering, responding, helping everyone out. Okay, I'll put all the information down below on the comments or wherever this is posted, the links, yeah. bios, um, all that good stuff. So, uh, well, very cool. Well, don't hang up just yet. I'm going to sign off with my beautiful listeners and we'll, we'll catch up before we sign off. Cool? Yes, ma'am. Well, thanks for coming on. I'm so glad I had you on. It was a good time. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, Aaliyah, uh, Aaliyah Ingle, man. She's a freaking rock star. And uh, I hope you had a good time. And I was starting off kind of pissy, and then I, I got a lot better, I got to say. So this one ended really, really well. Woo! I'm telling you, man. Although I might have talked to my therapist about this one. This one hit a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, guys, we love you. We appreciate you. Please leave us a review. Like I said, good, bad, or indifferent. You're going to help us reach more people. It doesn't matter. We love you, and until next time, bye.